What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on the channel and today I am super excited for this video and this vlog and uh, what's going on today because we are playing a tournament. That's right. What the hell am I doing? Well, I just wanted to play a tournament. So we are. We're driving to Foxes right now. We are playing in the uh, their August month. The month of August they had the WSOP circuit and they just had a ton of tournaments the whole month and I just haven't been able to go down there yet so today I finally am today is their $250 buy-in 20k guarantee on a nice little Monday morning so um, we'll see what that player pool looks like but at the end of the day it's I guess very I guess cheap I don't know it's one of the less expensive ones and I just had to go and just play it because it's been so long since I've played a tournament. Um, I think it's super fun. I like Foxwoods tournaments. I like their structure. I've only played one of them. Like I'm acting like I know what I'm talking about. But the one that I did play in, I ended up doing fairly well in. I didn't cash, but well enough for me as someone who has no idea what the hell I'm doing in tournaments. So um, anyways, this should be super fun. I'm really excited for it. I'm going to get there like maybe 15 minutes after um, the tournament starts, but that should be fine. Um, I just think that it's super fun and it's gonna mix up the, the vlog a little bit I haven't actually I think this is gonna be the second tournament on the channel and the first one didn't go good at all so we're gonna run this up I don't know what I don't know how to play tournaments like as much as little as I know how to play cash tournaments I'm a lot worse at but anyways um, let's get there let's do some cinematics some cool um, I don't know video stuff and let's get into the tournament let's start it up Did I give up? Was it too hard? Or was it too hard? Cause I just gave up Just gave up Did I sleep away the day? Cause I was tired Or did I get tired? Cause I slept too much Slept too much We go up and down We go up and down I know on this Roller coaster ride Roller coaster ride We fall back sometimes We fall back sometimes I know on this Roller coaster ride we sit down, we have a 10k stack, and let's get into some of the hands that we play. Also, hopefully you appreciate me wearing black so you can actually read the text a little bit easier. I realized that I probably should have done this a long time ago. But anyways, let's get into the hands. So level one blind, uh, blind structure is 100-100, 10k starting stack. We have ace three of diamonds in the small blind, and the early position raises to 400. The get two callers. And I am in the small blind, ace three. I'm gonna play this normally like I wouldn't cash. So I decided to three bet to 2,500. We get an early position player who raised, he calls, and the cutoff calls as well. So let's go to a flop of queen, deuce, eight, two spades out there. I'm first to act, and this is just not the board I'm looking for ever. Um, I really can't even bluff at this either. So I decide to check, early position player checks. And the cutoff, who had about 5k behind in the stack, jams um, for his remaining stack. And easy decision for me, obviously. I fold, and early position player folds. Um, guy shows queen 10 of diamonds for fun, and, uh, you know, that's fine. Um, I think I like my 3-bet. Uh, didn't really know we had 10k stacks, actually. To, if I'm being quite honest with you, didn't really know at the time. It was, like, one of the first hands, but now we found out. Second hand of level one that we'll go over, we have jack 10 of clubs in the cutoff, and, you know, we got 5,200, unfortunately, so half of a starting stack real quick. Early position player raises to 500, and the player to my right calls um, in position, no need to three better squeeze in this spot, so I flat, and also the blinds calls, so the pot is getting pretty bloated here. Flop comes, queen, jack, seven, two spades, and weird enough, action checks all the way to me. Middle pair, um, you know, I really don't like that queen out there. I think realistically I should probably bet, but I'm not really sure to be honest. I don't really know much about tournament poker here, but, um, you know, I do have middle pair. I do have a lot of equity, and realistically I don't want to go five ways to a turn, but I let that happen. So we go five ways to a turn, which is the nine of spades. And action checks all the way back to the player to my right, who bets 1.1k, 1 .1 1100. And here, although the spades does complete, it's pretty hard to put him on a flush just yet. You think that he would have bet this with the flush draw as well on the flop. So um, here we turn open ended and uh, 
could have enough equity to call in my opinion. So I call and an early position player calls as well. The river is a deuce of diamonds and the early position player checks absolute brick here and he bets 2800. Not really loving this spot. Like maybe I can look him up and hero the call this with a pair of jacks, but uh, ultimately I went for the sane and correct decision to fold. Early position player folds as well and uh, he shows a six of spades. So Next, we're in level two. Blinds are 100, 100, 100 with a big blind ante. And I have a starting stack of about 3,600, but in this hand, we have pocket tens on the button with about a stack of 3K. So we're pretty short now, obviously, but still got 30 bigs to work with right now. There's three limpers to me, and I raise it up to 800, and we get two callers from the small blind and under the gun. Under the gun player who limped called. So. I'm not really what I love, but you expect him to fold if he's going to limp under the gun? Probably not. So we go to a flop three ways of queen, nine, eight, two hearts, and a diamond out there. And action checks to me with essentially middle pair and a gutter ball. Um, I obviously don't love that queen in there, but realistically, I'm just too short to just check back and, and allow free cards. So um, I ultimately ended up deciding to jam just a little under a pot-sized bet. And uh, they both fold, so we take it down, and we're starting to maybe chip up a little bit. The next hand we play, we have pocket eight in middle position, and there's two limpers to me. I raise it up to 600, and we get both of the limpers to make the call. So um, flop comes queen seven queen, and action checks to me. Pocket eights in this spot, I can get a lot of value from sevens, and I think I get like maybe one straight of value, in my opinion, honestly. Doesn't really matter what the round is, I just want to get value from a seven and kind of shut down from there, which is a terrible logic, but I think that's how I should play it. Who knows? Um, anyways, um, when it checks to me, I bet 900, and the player to my right makes the call. The turn is a jack, so one of those cards I'm not really too comfortable with seeing, and uh, when he checks to me, I happily check it back to get to showdown. River is a 10, so really not the card I want to see, not the runner at all. Um, Ashen goes check check once again. He shows 9-7 off suit, and we take it down with our pair eights. We've won two hands so far. We're feeling pretty good, and we're really slowly chipping up. And we're in level three. Blinds are 100-200 with a 200 chip big blind ante. And we are on the button in this spot with 8-7 of hearts with 6,700 in our stack. There's two limps, and I raise it up to 800. The big blind and limpers make the call, so four ways to a flop here. Flop comes ace, queen, six with two hearts out there, so um, board that really favors me and really favors me when I do have that heart draw as well. So when action checks to me, it's a pretty clear C bet. I'm not expecting to take it down with this bet ever, but I do expect to eliminate the field and hopefully apply some more pressure or get there on the turn. So I bet 1500 and the big blind makes the call. And the turn comes the 10 of spades, picking up additional more equity, and he checks to me. As much as I'd love to check it back and realize my equity, uh, mainly just going to, I mean, I think here, we're just going to go for it. Um, we're, like, like I said, we didn't start too deep, and there's always a chance to rebuy, so like, let's just go for it. Um, let's just take it down the middle right now with 8 high, or if he calls somehow, we could hopefully hit one of our outs and, you know, scoop up a pretty big pot. So I jam for 4,400 total. He tanks for quite some time and ends up making the call with ace eight of diamonds. So we're off to the races, hoping to see a card that helps us. The river is a three diamonds. We brick out and we are on to bullet number two. All right, we busted the first bullet. That's fine. I think I made the right jam. I like that jam, especially with what he had, and I picked up more equity on the turn, um, given that I did have a gutter ball, but ran really bad this first bullet. It usually always happens to me in tournaments, so not like I was expecting to um, only last for one bullet. So we're back, and table, I'm going on a brand new table, so I have time to, oh, actually, they're starting right now. Yeah, what's up? Here in level four, the blinds are still the, are still the same, 100, 200 with the $200 or 200 chip big blind ante. And we have eight six of hearts in the big blind here with about 6,100 in their stack. Early position player raises to 700. A middle position player who is a pretty big stack calls and with only 500 for me to call, um, it's a little questionable, but suited gappers, sure. Let's go and see a flop. Flop comes. Ace, Jack, five, two hearts out there, so not bad at all. We do have uh, the heart draw, obviously, and a backdoor straight shot to go along with it. So 
um, action checks to the early position player who throws out a bet of a thousand. One K, um, one K a little bet, and when the middle position player calls, um, I think I'm a little obligated to call here with my draw. So we go ahead and call. The turn is a six, and I thought about leading out here because we do have a sh so much equity. Um, so much equity here with a pair and our flush draw, and maybe we can get some jacks to fold out. Um, anyways, I check, and action checks all the way around. The river is now of another five, so pairs the board, and action ends up checking all the way back to the middle position player who bets 2,800. Um, this is when I really thought I should have let out on the turn and probably fooled out some hands that beat me. Um, but given this action, nothing I can do but lay it down as we brick our draw and the early position player folds as well. Alright, we're on a break after level 4. I have like 4,600 in chips in front of me. So there's a dream. The dream's alive right now um, after the during on the first break. So 15 minute break and I'm on bullet number 2 and I have not a lot in front. I think the chip average right now is around like 13k and there's a good amount of people that showed up. There's about like 165-ish um, entrance and there's gonna be more. Late reg, late reg ends at level eight. So um, after that break, that's when the late reg ends. So it looks like I might be in for three bullets. Who knows, that might be unfortunate, but um, doing it for the vlog, I don't know. I, I'm just not really playing great. I'm also not running great. Um, I just don't really know. I'm not hitting flops, you know. I'm flopping a lot of draws and they're not getting in and um, it's just really unfortunate. I'm not really going to push it. That last hand I had with 8-6, I think there's some merit. Nope, that's not it. There's no merit. No merit to leading out on the turn there. Results-wise, maybe. But in terms of just like, I don't know. It's really dumb. Out of position with an 8 high flush draw. Like, I just went with it. Um, I was really priced in, obviously, pre-flop to call. But um, that's just how I feel right now. So we are in on the break. I'm going to go pee. I need a pee. So I'm going to sign off. And we're going to get back to playing. Hopefully, I run a little bit better. Hopefully, we can turn our small 4K stack into something else. I don't know. We're in position of a really big stack right now. So um, dream is alive so far. And hopefully, we can just run well run a little bit better, build up a stack, and let's do it. First hand back from the break, we get to play Queen Jack of Diamonds in the cutoff with about 4,400 in our stack. Here on level five, the, the blinds are whatever they are in the corner, 200, 300, 300. Um, so there's one limber to me, and I raise it up to 1,200 with Queen Jack of Diamonds, and we get the big blind and the limper to call. So three waste now, two a flop of Ace, Queen, Deuce, two clubs out there, and action checks all the way to me. I don't love the ace out there, but, you know, the fact that there is a flush draw, you know, I don't know. I check here 100% of the time. But tournament poker, I bet really small to 1,500. The big blind um, raises to put me all in. I don't remember what how much it was realistically, but, I mean, I was so short, so um, really didn't matter too much. And uh, I don't love this spot ever, especially when he raises, but I did see that he is very, very loose and active. He called a like 30 big blind shove with 9-7 off suit and got there against ace queen. I don't know. That's what happened. Um, so, you know, like he's probably one of the better players I'd like to call with middle pay here against. But uh, when he puts aggression, it's weird. But like I said, I'm too short to fold and just hopefully we can go for it. Uh, so I call, he shows pocket deuces, and we do not improve. We did improve the two pair on a turn um, with a jack, but uh, we don't improve after that. Rebuy time, bullet number three, and things are going pretty well, I'll be honest. We look down at pocket aces in under the gun, and we are, our chip stack is over 10k at this point, so over starting stack. So uh, pocket aces under the gun, Ooh, that made a noise. And we open up to 1100 in this same level. Everyone folded. Here, still in level 5, we have King 10 of Hearts in the small blind with 12.7k in our stack. And a middle position player opens it up to 900 chips. Um, here in the small blind, I don't like this spot here. I think calling just seems so passive. I'm just going to play my hand face up all the time. But um, maybe I can mix in the 3-bet here sometimes. I don't really know what you tournament people do. But um, I just call just taking the lower variance route, which necess isn't necessarily the best route ever. So we go heads up to a flop of King-9, Deuce, Rainbow, and I check. Um, really feeling good about me flopping top pair. He bets 1,500. 
interesting sizing it's really big and um i don't really feel amazing about this now you know um he bets so big he's like 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 almost baiting me to call with a king and kind of just reeling me in here so um i do have the backdoor flesh raw which is pretty nice but you know i almost really thought about folding this spot because he just didn't seem like the type of player that um that i would be behind to in this spot ever and just not can't think of a real value here besides like queen jack or something like that but i call and we go to a turn which is a six not a heart unfortunately and i check he bets 2k um down betting in the spots seems really weird and seems really valuey like i said i can't think of a hand that i can't even think of a value hand that i beat and i just know he's there's no way he's bluffing here especially with the sizing so at the bottom of my range with my pair of kings i fold and we move on we skip level six because nothing happened but moving on to level seven Blinds are 300, 500 with the 500 ship big blind ante. And we look down at pocket queens and under the gun plus one. I open things up to 1200 and the player to my left who covers me makes the call. He's also been pretty passive and the small blind calls as well. So um, we're going to go three ways to a flop of ace three ace rainbow. Um, action checks to me and as much as I love and hate that board, um, I love it a lot more, obviously, but I don't think I can get a whole lot of hands to call with worse. Maybe pocket tens, nines, eights, maybe sevens, but not really. Um, but hands like that is what I could really target with a bet. But realistically, I'd like to just check it back and induce a bluff later down the line. So I check here, and the player to my left bets 3,000. Folds to me, and pretty big bet, like I said. Um, doesn't... It just seems like he's nutted in this spot a lot of the time, especially with such a big bet. Um, so, I mean, still here, top of my range, going with my plan to call it, call it down. The turn is a six, and once again, I check. He bets 3K again, and given the stack sizes at this point, um, this down bet seemed really strange, and I really hated that. I thought for a good amount, given this down bet, it's just so value and it's like just... It's just like, please call me kind of a bet. But uh, like I said, once again, I'm at the top of my range and I really can't fold. And I'm sticking to my plan of, you know, just being here to call down. And I just can't fold pocket queens here. So I call and the river is a five. Another card that really helps me out and really just I can't find a fold here ever. Right. So I check. He jams like once again, like I'm so committed. I'm so short at this point. So it's a snap call for me. Um, not feeling good about it a lot of the time, but like I just can't fold in this spot ever. He shows queen nine offsuit, and we take it down. We get the full double up, and things are running hot. Let's go. Still here in level seven, I have ace deuce of heart in the button, and uh, we're sitting definitely above average stack at this point. The other gun player opens it up to 1200, and the middle position player calls. Um, in position here, I can definitely see flops pretty cheaply, and there's no need to 3-bet here, so I call as well, and the small blind calls. So let's go multi way to a flop of queen, six, nine, two hearts out there. So we do flop the nut flush draw, and we're obviously going with it. On the gun player, C-bet's 1,700, and it's really small, and folds to me. Um, you know, I think I could raise here as a bluff but it's such a small bet and i'm given such a great price to call here to bink a bink a heart so that's what i do especially in position i call and the small blind calls as well the turn is the king of diamonds so brings in the additional backdoor flush draw and small blind leads and jams for 10k um 10.7k and the only gun player rejams for 21k total uh, we've got some action going on here with this turn card, and um, I I just can't call. I wish I could. Um, the fact that I, if I called, it'd be such a massive pot, and I'd love to suck out because I'm clearly behind someone here. So um, I fold, and they both show the small blind shows nine ten of diamonds. Under the gun shows jack ten off suit with the nuts right now. The river, he fades everything. It's a seven of clubs, and uh, Jack-10 takes it down with the nut straight. Somehow he was able to, f to find a way to f um, fade all of the hearts and the diamonds out there. I'm sitting here. That's when you know uh, I just busted after my third rebuy, and this happened three minutes ago, and I'm just fuming internally in my head. Uh, I. 
I'm fuming because I ran it up. I had my stack up to 36k, about 12k over the average stack size, and things were going really well. And we'll go over the last two hands that happened. Um, and I look down at pocket jacks in the big blind, and it's 300, 600, 600 level. The uh, let's take a look at my notes here. Pocket jacks, big blind, 34k, 36k, whatever it was. And the under the gun plus one player raises the 1500. And there's four callers. Um, player in early position, player in the hijack, the button, and small blind. All four of them call and actions onto me. And I'm kind of a middle of the road stack. We're playing at a pretty deep table. So with 34k pocket jacks, assuming that under the gun plus one isn't too strong, no one else is ahead of me right now. So I put in the three bet to 12-6. Um, realistically, maybe could maybe there's some merit to shoving here, but I put in the three bet to 12-6, and everyone else folds to the small blind who jams for 18 something, 18-7. Easy call for me, obviously, and we show down. I have pocket jacks. He shows king queen of spades. So uh, we're flipping. Not really a great spot to flip, and flop comes queen high. Rivers a king and he rivers two pair and uh, the, the board was good for him um, that kind of pissed me off I don't really know how you jam I like I don't know tournament poker so I'm not like blaming or anything but I just don't know how you jam 18k 30 bigs it with king queen suited so um, that was unfortunate to lose that flip and our stack just got bundled to like 15k and I uh, wasn't feeling great after that and the very next hand very next hand falling hand we have king queen of clubs in the small blind that's like a slap in the face and the cutoff opens to 1100 I flat for some reason and the big blind just jams rips it all in um, the button or cutoff folds and I am just tilted and steaming so I just throw in the call like fuck it um, He actually had me covered by a little bit and he shows pocket aces and The board is clean for him. So we bust in two quick hands and I am like literally so mad right now um, <laughs> It's really frustrating for me right now, so We'll see, and uh, I don't know, I don't know. So uh, I was told to stop filming. Um, anyways, this is gonna wrap up the vlog, just a little outro. Um, hopefully you enjoyed following along my journey um, after punting the first two buy-ins, running it up a little bit, and then punting it again. So punt to three buy-ins, I feel pretty bad about it, um, but I guess the only good thing is I made $15 in blackjack, because I degened it up real quick, and uh, now we got some nice little noodles. So I guess I got these noodles for free by playing blackjack. I guess it's not a total loss, but anyway, I'm still not happy about myself. There's a lot of learning to do in tournament poker. I didn't come in expecting to win, but when I ran it up, I really would have liked to keep that going. I punted the rest of the 15k. I just wasn't. I just didn't feel like playing poker, and yeah, that's really my bad. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and. Um, Maybe I'll post some more tournament stuff moving forward. I know the Encore is going to have some more poker, um, some more tournaments coming up in September, so we'll see. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you guys out.